What's up, boys? Callsign Grammy here. Welcome to another DCS fast and easy tutorial on the newly released Apache FCR system. This is pretty exciting stuff. And the focus for today's video is going to be on how to utilize the FCR in the pilot seat. And that's specifically because I know many uh, uh, virtual pilots in the Apache and DCS are like me and fly solo, whether they're solo missions or self created or otherwise, or you're in multiplayer servers and you're just flying the Apache by yourself. So the more practical way to learn the FCR, in my opinion, is going to be in the pilot seat first. And not to mention, there's already been quite a few videos that are covering the uh, FCR in the CPG seat, which is a little bit more extensive and detailed. And I will will do a video on that separately. But this one, I think, is going to be more of use to more people. So let's dive in to it. First, we need to start with the bindings. Thankfully, the bindings needed for the fire control system right now in the pilot seat isn't too much. Hopefully, you got some room on your whole test system or whatever you're going to be util utilizing here. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is make sure that we have our site select switches all set up already. Hopefully, you do. If not, you're going to look for a uh, site select switch, and that's going to be left for FCR, which is going to pull up the FCR on your display. Uh, you have uh, uh, HMD up, link is down, TADS is right. So that's the first thing you're going to want to have. Next, we're going to want to have FCR mode switch bound. Right now, the GTM is the only one that has been implemented, and that is up on the switch. Uh, if you have the space, you might as well just bind the rest of them because they will be introduced at a later point, from my understanding. So RM, uh, RMAP for right, uh, TPM for left, and then you have ATM for down. Next, very important here, you're going to want to have your FCR scan size switch. This is going to allow you to, you know, change the size of that scan. You want to focus on a very narrow area uh, or you want to have a more broader scan. Well, this is what you're going to utilize to do that. So you're going to have zoom is going to be up. You're going to have uh, medium view or zoom is down. You're going to have narrow view is left, and you're going to have wide view for your right. The odds are you already have this bound, but I just want to reiterate that this is also important to have because you're going to need to select your weapon systems here to then fire off with the FCR system. So make sure your weapon action switch is all set up here, uh, down, up, left, right, and your weapon trigger guard as well. Have that set for the open and close so that you can fire off. Uh, finally, you're going to need your uh, weapon trigger switch first detent. And I went ahead and bound the second detent as well, just for good measure. So th those are there. And that is what you're going to do to fire off your uh, radar guided hellfires. And last but not least, we need to bind the FCR scan switches, both single and continuous here. So bind those two. That's what's going to allow you to scan either one single scan pass or have it continuously scan uh, until you stop it and that's going to be it that's all you really need not too many key binding here let's get back into the aircraft now let's talk about this whole setup and everything first what i like to do is take my tsd and change the map color to satellite uh, the reason i do this and you'll see here in a second is that once you activate your fcr it will uh contrast better so you can see where it's at so i find that to be more useful versus having it on the um uh, where is it at it's here the chart kind of gets a little it's hard to kind of discern the uh fcr angles and, and and all of that so uh just a preference there i want to mention that for those of you that uh, might struggle to see it now the first and most important thing to know here before you even dive into the fcr is that you need to actually equip it onto the aircraft itself you see the fcr dome right there make sure that in the mission editor that you check it on so that it is on I learned the hard way when I jumped in and I thought that the FCR would be automatically loaded onto the aircraft and that was not the case. So just double check if, you, if you're trying to figure out why it won't turn on, uh, it's not displaying or allowing you to do it. It's probably because, again, you don't have the dome equipped onto the aircraft. So if you have the dome on and you're ready to go, so uh, now we can dive into getting this thing set up here. So when you hit FCR on the push button, you're gonna see this right here. FCR is not powered. That means we need to turn it on much the same way as you would your uh, RWR or your uh, laser uh, on board. So we're gonna go to util for utility. You're gonna see here it says FCR. We're gonna push button that. Once we do that, it's gonna say FCR bit in progress. Uh, by the way, if for some reason it doesn't allow you to do this, you can unpin it and put it back to norm down here where it says MMA, and that will allow you to then cycle it on and do that. It takes about 60 seconds to do that, but thankfully we have a cheat code. We hit FCR bit override, and it just skips that process, 
and you'll see here that we have some basic uh, kind of options within the utility section of here, which we're not going to dive into today. We're going to back out of util, and now we have the uh, the rangefinder display here for the FCR. Now, when you see this right here, it doesn't mean that it is actually on just yet. It just means that it is turned on, but not focused, like you can't control it just yet. Now, in order to focus it, you're going to use your site select switch and you're going to press that over. And let's go ahead and show you this on your site select switch uh, right there. FCR left. We're going to hit the left. Once we do that, now you can see here that we have some more options pop up into the screen. Once you see these, the nomenclature here pop up with the zoom arrows, the target elevation uh, acquisition, that now means that the uh, FCR is now uh, working on and you can control it. It's active, right? It's ready to look for targets. It's that simple to turn it on and get it running just like that. Now, let me point out as we look over to the right side for the TSD, you can see how I mentioned earlier that with the satellite uh, map coloration, uh, how that uh, FCR pops out against it. So it makes it easier to see where your FCR is pointed at and what it's looking at here. In the CPG seat, you have the right hand grip that allows you to move the FCR all around to scan in different directions. In the pilot seat, you don't have that. But what you do have is your acquisition source. Um, and what you can do here, and I'll try and demonstrate this here. Let me back out real quick. We'll go to pilot uh, head scope. And what happens here is as I turn my head, you can see how it's turning with me. Much like how the gun works, when you turn around, you can side over to a target. Uh, the FCR will operate in the same way. So that is a way for you to utilize the FCR and have it point into a cert certain direction and look over there and scan in that area um, by changing the acquisition source uh, to your pilot head scope. Otherwise, you just go back and put it to your tats. Now, another way that you can manipulate the FCR to look left and right, if you will, is by utilizing the arrows here on the left and the right. Um, all you have to do there is by uh, pressing the push button or on the, the display itself. And that only goes from side to side. So it only has a 180 degree total range. And then once you're ready to begin scanning for targets, you will go ahead and utilize either the single or the continuous scan. Important to note here that while you're on the ground, it will not work. But the moment we get into the air, it'll start scanning around and uh, looking for targets. Okay, so now that we covered kind of the initial setup, the key bindings, some of the basics here, how to manipulate the FCR from the pilot seat, let's get into the action here. There's some important things that you do need to know and some recommendations that I have about uh, reasons why you shouldn't just go crazy and just take an entire load out of radar guided hellfires here in this example and how to deploy the weapon systems. It's pretty cool. Check it out. All right, so here we are on station. Let me explain what's happening right here. Uh, I'm going to be in the CPG seat here just for this first part to get this out of the way. It's going to be a lot quicker and easier uh, versus trying to let George do this. It's important that you don't necessarily go out with a full payload of radar guided hellfires here and utilize your FCR because the FCR has a range of six kilometers or just over three miles or so. That means you have to get really, really close. Well, what happens in a real situation in a lot of these servers or even missions where you come up on to a target and they have a SAM site, those SAM sites can reach out from a uh, longer distance to take you out. So if you think you're going to come in within six kilometers to take out those targets without getting wrecked by a SAM site, you're in for a rude awakening. So what I suggest here is take at least one rack of laser guided hellfires. So you have a little bit more of a distance for you to fire on. So we're going to demonstrate that quickly here for this. We're going to um, go ahead and peek in a little bit more. And where is our target should be where is it? Quickly looking for them. Should be an SA over here. Up oh, there it is, right there. So we're gonna lock it. We're gonna arrange it. We should be good to go. Hawk. One o'clock searching. We're Hawk. gonna fire. One o'clock searching. And we're gonna fire off on him before he takes off on us. We've got 20 seconds to to target. Now, this is going to be a better case scenario here where you're going to have a little bit more protection and safety utilizing your laser, your laser guided hellfire. So don't dismiss them all the way just yet uh, in lieu of the, the radar guided. I know it's going to be a lot of fun for a lot of folks, but uh, I, I think you got to still protect yourself. So boom, that's out of the way. It's done. Cool. 
we're out of here. Now let's hop back into the pilot seat to continue the rest of this kind of demonstration with the radar guided hellfires here. Okay, now that we got the SAM thread out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into the FCR from the pilot seat here and actually deploy it. So we're gonna go ahead and do a scan and then we've got targets right there. We're going to go ahead and stop it since we have that. Uh, now that we have those uh, acquired or at least uh, pulled up, double check that we have our radar guided hellfires uh, enabled or selected here. Looks like one's in the chamber ready to go. And then we are going to go ahead and hit that first detent. And it's off. And then we can line up the next one. And that's off. And then we'll let off another one. I mean, this is the beauty of, about this system, isn't it? And just look at that, look at that just destruction down there. You can see here that it pretty much took out uh, well, there was some friendly or at least civilian vehicles taken out in the blast. Uh, you know, chalk it up to casualties of war here. But this front row of vehicles are pretty much decimated. Uh, if we go back further over here into the back, it took out some threats that are back in here. Um, and then it took out some of the convoys that are back here. Again, not every shot landed perfectly. Uh, although this could be spill damage. I don't know why that car's lit up. Um, but for the most part, it took out quite a few vehicles. I mean, a good amount. Uh, doesn't seem like it lands 100% on every uh, shot. But, you know, you figure you're flying with two or three people and you're all letting these uh, go. I mean, it's just pure destruction uh, for the enemy. So that was pretty cool to see. And just a quick demonstration on how fast you can ripple off those uh, uh, radar guided hellfires with the FCR system here. It's just going to make things so much interesting. I really hope that uh, some of these multiplayer servers don't try to nerf the uh, FCR system and gatekeep, let people fly the way they want to fly. Uh, that's just my thoughts on it. Otherwise, it kind of takes away from the fun of it all uh, and all of that. So we'll see. I haven't, I haven't uh, dove into multiplayer with the FCR just yet. Something I'm working on and maybe share some videos on that experience and see how servers are treating this because uh, quite honestly, having a Hellfire, or I'm sorry, having the Apache with the payload that it has, um, you know, 16 Hellfires, I, I mean, you know, you fly with you and a buddy, you two alone can wipe out an entire area before other aircraft get a chance to come over there or, or do stuff. So, uh, you know, some multiplayer servers might have some concerns about that. It might be deemed OP. I disagree. You know, people still got to fly all the way over there and deal with air threats and surface air threats, you know. Uh, just maybe add some more enemies to, you know, balance things out. It's my thoughts. Anyway, that's going to be a wrap for this video. Hopefully, you guys found it useful on how to utilize the FCR in the pilot seat, which I know many of you will be flying solo dolo like myself. Uh, so hopefully this quick, fast, and easy video helps you out. If it did, throw a, a thumbs up on the video. Feel free to subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next video. Call sign Grammy out.